Welcome to the boating adventure. Well, a very good evening to you. It's Wednesday, the 10th of May, 2023. And I'm just standing on the top of Bridge 22 on the Langothan Canal, having walked from Wenbury Mill down the towpath, past the uh, second of the lift bridges. The first one is at uh, Wenbury Mill itself, and that's uh, an electric one. And once we go under bridge 22, this stretch then takes us to the Marbury Locks. So tomorrow morning, I'm hoping to uh, take the kayak from the uh, mill and then down to this stretch to 22 and as far as the, uh, the Marbury Locks and then back again. It's quite a nice uh, stretch this, very, very quiet. But then uh, most of the Klangothland Canal that I've uh, been paddling this week has been very, very quiet. The weather forecast for tomorrow is much the same as it has been all week. A very nice early start and then by about 10 o'clock it's uh, intermittent rain showers. Hopefully it won't be as bad as Tuesday when the intermittent rain showers were orchestrated with the claps of thunder. We haven't had that today. In fact, it hasn't rained for most of the day. We just had the odd shower. Looks like some uh, glamping kind of setup over there. Seems to be a, a hot tub. <laughs> and uh, those pods seem to have, uh, certainly one of them, it looks like it has a, a stove for heating. Very nice, very quiet. That's the uh, signpost for it, Rye Bank Adventures exclusive hire glamp site book now at ryebankadventures.co.uk gonna have a look at that that would be fun <laughs> so it's just coming up to around about quarter to nine um, his lordship here has had a, a really long walk for about an hour and a quarter tonight this is his third walk of today. <laughs> so he's he, uh, I'm sure tonight he, he'll sleep. And if he doesn't, I know I will. <laughs> so hopefully I'll uh, catch you tomorrow morning. Bye for now. Well, a very good morning to you. It's Thursday, the 11th of May, 2023. And it's just around about 10 to eight. And this is the view outside of our apartment window. It's been like this every day this week, really sunny to begin with. But the forecast for today is for rain mostly all day. But I'm not going to let that deter me. And I'm going to carry on and do that kayaking that I uh, plan to do. I will probably uh, take the kayak over to that bench over there and uh, set it up and then I can use the uh, bollard on the uh, approach to the bridge just to get in. 
and it saves disrupting traffic. I have got my uh, British Waterways key which you do need to operate this uh, lift, uh, lift bridge. The one good thing about this lift bridge, if you're a single-handed boater, it's great because the uh, controls are actually on the towpath side. So there's no problem about having to cross over the bridge and so on to get your boat through. It's quite easy. If only they were all like that. <laughs> okay, so it's just uh, five minutes past nine and I'm all set up. I brought the uh, kayak, I ported it over the first lift bridge. Much easier, I didn't want to stop the traffic, so. So off we go, I'm traveling, ooh, you hear all those uh, birds in that uh, rookery, loads of crows. So I'm traveling westward now on the Langothlan Canal. And I'm hoping to get to the first of the Marbury Locks. I doubt whether I'll go any further, because it means lifting the boat out and but you never know, see what time it is and also the weather today. The forecast is for rain for most of the day, so we'll see how we go with that one. I passed all of these boats that are moored up here last night. This one here is quite an unusual boat. It's got a, it's a narrow boat with a centre cockpit. You do see a few of them, but they are quite uh, few and far between. So the steering will be sort of uh, in the middle of the boat, really. I think that would take a bit of you getting used to. Don't think there's a tiller at the back. There's, a, no, there's no access to the back of the boat there, just a window, so the steering is in the middle. boat I'm just passing is called Free Spirit, quite like that name. I think if I had a, a narrow boat I might be inclined to copy that. Free Spirit. Kind of sums up the lifestyle really.
so as expected the uh, lift bridge in the distance is up I think it stays up really it's one of those where it's only ever put down occasionally to access a small holding which is on the on the towpath side it joins together the small holding and the little garden centre which looks quite nice I am sporting some uh, snazzy fingerless uh, gloves this morning. I spied these from a very uh, exclusive and well-known sports shop, beginning with A. <laughs> and they were the princely sum, I think, of 3.99. And they've got a, a little sort of gel patch inside for the palm of the hand. I thought I'd give them a go because very often when I've been paddling for quite a way you do get a, a blister come up between the first finger and the thumb just in the crevice there it's just the friction I suppose of continually doing this so I thought I'd give these gloves a go and see if they make a difference I've had a few comments on kayaking vlogs about feathering and that's sort of offsetting the the blades of the, the paddles you can have them set at different angles so they don't so they're not sort of parallel with one another which mine are I can adjust these but there's only a choice of uh, a selection of three holes and to be honest I've tried it and it doesn't make a deal of difference not for what I'm doing I think if you were doing sort of uh, something which required a lot of speed a quick reaction or something like that then yeah it's supposed to help with uh, wind resistance and that kind of thing but I'm just happy to do a gentle paddle <laughs> sheep here that I think they might be getting used to uh, me by now. I've been down here every day so far with the dog, but every time I come, they they sort of uh, they gather together. <laughs> yeah, they're doing a photo op. <laughs> so there's a bit of a garden centre there I've just spied a notice which says half price. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely going to have to uh, come back this way later on. Doesn't look very open at the moment though. So this is bridge 22. I'm going to rename this bridge. I don't know what it's called really, but I'm going to call it Sandy's Turnaround. <laughs> this is where he gets to. This is the bridge that I was standing on last night.
So this is that uh, Rye Bank Adventures, um, this exclusive glamp site. <coughs> I did look on the internet last night and it accommodates up to 17 people and it costs £250 per night, which sounds a lot, but if you divide it by 17, it's not. Hiya. It has uh, two accommodation pods which um, they don't look so big from the outside but inside they, they look enormous and they can take quite a few people. You can also have people sleeping in the large bell tent and I was right there is a hot tub and that's uh, powered by the uh, wood burning stove so that sounds really good and then there is a, another pod which opens up and that's where you uh, do all your uh, cooking and it's got full cooking facilities you get everything there the only thing you have to take is your own bedding I think and your clothes obviously but um, yeah it looks quite good but you'd need a, a group of people to make it a, a viable proposition I suppose But if you only had 10 people, that would only work out at £25 per night, so that wouldn't be too bad, I suppose. The pods themselves, they have... Uh, <laughs> typical in this age, they have Wi-Fi um, USB ports powered by solar. And then they've got some uh, some lighting in there, which is also solar. But if you want to go camping, and uh, you don't want to take all the stuff with you, that'd be an ideal. They say it's kind of halfway house between real glamping and proper camping.
And just in front of me now is the lock landing. And there's a lock cottage and a bridge. And presumably under the bridge there is a lock. Looks like it. So this is my uh, turn round point today. It's quite a long way actually that was. taken me about an hour and a half. So this is the uh, first of the Marbury locks. So that's bridge number 23. You can hear the very, very strong bywash. It's quite a feature on this canal of the uh, the bywashes on the locks can be quite lethal. Look at that coming down there. I'm going to use that to turn the boat round. see why there was quite a current on the way up but I can enjoy this on the way back the, the way to deal with uh, water like that in your boat is to steer into it many people will automatically try and steer away from it but the best thing to do is to steer into it. If you steer into it, then it compensates for the push on the side of the boat and it'll keep you in a straight line. Top tip. I can feel the current, it's brilliant. I think I could stop paddling, and just uh, glide along now. That's lovely. So much easier. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed this uh, trip with me along the Hangothlan Canal from Renbury to Marbury Lock. Yeah. It is now because I've got the water pushing me this way. <laughs> when I looked again this morning, I just need two more subscribers to take me to uh, 600. So another um, two or three <laughs> would be good, <laughs> just in case somebody falls by the wayside. So um, if you haven't yet subscribed, then please consider doing so. It's completely free. And I will try to make my videos as entertaining as I possibly can and to appeal to different types of uh, boaters, people like me on um, cruisers, GRPs. I try to include um, some of the more historical boats. I've got footage of visiting places like Portsmouth and going around the dockyards, kayaking, which I absolutely love. So I'm trying to uh, include different things that would interest different people. I do enjoy uh, 
your comments and I do respond to each and every one of them as quickly as I possibly can. So thank you very much for watching and thank you for all your support and as always do take care.